Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a homemade exponential equation. A very, very exponential equation. We have a lot of exponents. That's why I call this a very exponential equation. We have three on the left and three on the right, which is kind of good because we have the equal number. So we have four to the power x plus six to the power x plus 10 to the power x equals two to the x plus three to the x plus five to the x. Now for these kinds of equations, there's usually a trivial solution. By the way, this problem is very similar to some of the problems that I've seen in um, some math books from Romania. Obviously, if you're from Romania, just let us know in the comment section because you got a collection of beautiful, beautiful math problems. Anyways, this looks like one of those uh, with uh, lots of exponents and it kind of looks a little intimidating, doesn't it? But here's one thing I want you to notice. Any number to the power zero is equal to one. Would you agree? including zero. I know some people are going to be like, uh oh no, zero to the power of zero does not equal one. Well, that's being argued, but here's the thing. Even though that's a very controversial topic, a good number of people believe that zero to the power of zero is equal to one. So, and I'm one of them. Anyways, if you don't believe it's uh, one, that's okay. Uh, we'll get along, but I want you to take a deeper look because there's a lot of proofs of that fact. I consider that a fact. Anyways, so a to the power zero equals one. I'm not gonna make an exception. And in this case, if you replace x with zero, four to the power zero, six to the power zero, 10 to the power zero, they're all one. One plus one plus one is equal to three. Same thing happens on the right hand side. Therefore, x equals zero is a solution. Well, it's too trivial, right? It is. But imagine when you have an equation like this and you have to find at least one solution, at least you got zero. Sometimes x equals one becomes a trivial solution. For example, an equation like this. Think about it. x equals zero gives you one plus one equals one plus one, yes, but x equals one also gives you a solution. Well, these kinds of problems are interesting because can you find other solutions besides those? That's gonna be something interesting to look at. So that's what we're gonna look at for this problem and I call this homemade because I kind of thought about the idea. I'm also planning to make a short out of this, similar idea, but let's go ahead and take a look at how we can solve this type of equation. First of all, we do know that, okay, x equals zero is a valid solution, right? So the million dollar question is, are there any other solutions, right? How do we answer that question? That's a good question, isn't it? So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to factor the left-hand side because four, six, and 10 are all even and they have a common factor. What is it? Two, right? All even numbers are divisible by two. But wait a minute, what about the exponents? Well, four to the power x can be written as two to the x times two to the x. Six to the power x can be written as two to the x times three to the x and 10 to the x can be written as two to the x times five to the x, thanks to properties of exponents, right? Whenever you have something like a, b to the power n, it can be written as a, n, a to the n, b to the n, but you can also do the opposite. So obviously, that's a two-way equality, right? So let's go ahead and factor everything on the left-hand side. And apparently, two to the x is a common factor, so we're gonna take that. So let me rewrite the equation. Was it four, six, 10? Yep. Sometimes you may not know the numbers even though you come up with the problem. Easy to forget. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and factor out a two to the x. And from here, we're gonna get two to the x plus three to the x plus five to the x. And then that is equal to two to the x plus three to the x plus five to the x. This is really nice because we got the same thing, but don't just cancel it out. Okay, you can just easily, okay, I'm just gonna cross these out. Two to the x equals zero or one. Is it one? Yeah. And then just go from there because you're going to be losing some of the solutions. So instead, let's go ahead and put everything on the same side and factor. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract everything on the right hand side from the left hand side. But I want to do it as a quantity, as a single quantity, so I can keep everything positive. And I just want to put a one in front of it because there's no number, so it's one. So now we have a common factor, do you see? This one and this one. So we're gonna go ahead and take that out. And then 
of course the second factor is going to be 2 to the x minus 1 yes we kind of got something similar but also we kept the f one of the factors which is good okay you may or may not get something out of that though so here if you set this equal to 0 2 to the x minus 1 equals 0 implies 2 to the x equals 1 and that implies x equals 0 now this is a good question if you're looking for real solutions obviously x equals 0 is valid right and we'll get back to the real situation okay but let's go ahead and take a look at the other factor now 2 to the x plus 3 to the x plus 5 to the x equals 0 uh oh 2 to the x 3 to the x 5 to the x are all greater than 0 I'm not saying greater than or equal to because they can't even be 0 they're all positive sum is positive that can't be 0 even in the complex world maybe in the complex world there is a solution but how do you find it that's a very good question right I don't think there's an algebraic or synthetic way or analytical method to solve it uh, you could probably just use approximations maybe graph it well with the graph you're not going to be able to find complex solutions will you no I don't think so anyways so we're kind of stuck here I think I mean I was thinking about maybe put these two together and put this one on the right hand side and then I kind of need to do something to absorb the negative but I can't because I don't know what x is 2 plus 3 is 5 yes but that doesn't help here so I don't know I'm kind of stuck if you know a way out let us know all right so let's focus on the other factor now because x equals 0 shouldn't be the only solution should it well here's the thing there's more than meets the eye what is that was it like that there's more to it than meets the eye okay here we go so let's go ahead and take this expression and write it in a more complex way I mean not complicated way a complex way so I can basically write the 2 as e to the power ln 2 and then raise it to the power x and 1 in the complex word can be written as e to the power 2 pi n i this is nice from here uh, we multiply the exponents e to the power x ln 2 and that is equal to e to the power 2 pi n i since a e's are the same if e to the a is e equal equal to e to the b then a equals b right it doesn't that always follow and of course sometimes there's a period argument but we already have that right here so from your x ln 2 should be 2 pi n i and of course if n is 0 then x is 0 we know that right that's the trivial solution or is that the standard I mean what is it called the principal value I don't know anyways let's divide both sides by ln 2 and we'll get our complex or should I say imaginary solutions great so there are basically infinitely many complex solutions you can replace n with anything you want and proceed with that I'm gonna go ahead and show you a graph and then we'll finish up with that but that will be the general solution for this equation all right so let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of tada these two functions yes they do intersect at x equals 0 notice that one of them is going to grow faster and faster and faster so they will never intersect again and this brings us to the end of this video well, thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye